further aftermath of the DART mission. Hubble showed a vast field of debris scattered around the asteroid. The Hubble Space Telescope spotted large rocks ejected from the Dimorphos asteroid after it was struck by the DART spacecraft in the first test of our ability to defend Earth from a potentially planet-threatening space rock. Astronomers have counted at least 37 large boulders slowly moving away from the asteroid. Rocks traveling through space pose a real threat to the Earth. Scientists estimate that 65 million years ago, an asteroid several kilometers across hit the Earth and wiped out dinosaurs and other life forms. Unlike dinosaurs, humanity can avoid this fate. The first test of our defense capabilities was the DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test, mission. On September 27 last year, a spacecraft weighing less than 600 kilograms, the size of a refrigerator, hit the Dimorphos asteroid with the dimensions of the Great Pyramid of Giza at a speed of about 23,000 km per hour. Kilometer per hour. Dimorphos is a small body, only 160 meters in diameter, about 11 million kilometers from Earth. It is the moon of a larger rock, 780 meters in diameter, called Didymos. This was the first experiment conducted by mankind, which aimed to change the trajectory of an object in space. And this test was successful. Dimorphos took 11 hours and 55 minutes to circle Didymos before impact. Analysis of data collected by ground-based and space-based telescopes showed that the DART spacecraft changed the orbit of Dimorphos by 32 minutes, shortening it to 11 hours and 23 minutes. This is more than initially assumed. The DART impact alone produced a 1,500 km long plume of debris trailing behind Dimorphos that could be admired for almost a month. Scientists have determined that such a large change in orbit was caused not only by the spacecraft crashing into a space rock. Most of the change was due to the recoil effect of all the ejected material blasting into space, which researchers estimated to be more than 1,000 tons. The DART spacecraft hit a spot about 25 meters from the center of the asteroid, maximizing the force of the impact, which sent large amounts of debris from the asteroid flying outward. The recoil from this force pushed the asteroid further away from its previous trajectory. Researchers also determined that the impact of the probe reduced the speed of Dimorphos by 2.7 mm per second, but thanks to the ejection of matter, this effect was several times greater. Now, 10 months after the impact, the Hubble Space Telescope has seen the aftermath of the first ever intentional collision between a spacecraft and an asteroid. The sensitive eye of the telescope allowed to observe at least 37 large boulders thrown into space. Rocks between 1 and 7 meters in diameter, instead of falling back onto dimorphos are moving away from it at a speed of about 0.8 km per hour. The total mass of escaping rocks was estimated at 0.1%. Asteroid mass before impact. Scientists believe that the boulders escaping into space were knocked off the surface of the asteroid. In other words, the DART spacecraft did not so much smash dimorphos and tear large chunks of debris out of it, 
but shed those rocks that lay loosely on its surface. Scientists want to understand this process in detail, and hope that determining the path of each boulder will help them in this. It's a spectacular observation. Much better than I expected, says David Jewett, a planetary scientist at the University of California, Los Angeles. We see a cloud of boulders carrying mass and energy away from the impact target. If we track the boulders in future Hubble observations, we may have enough data to determine their exact trajectories. And then we will see in which directions they were launched from the surface, he adds. The success of the mission increases the chances that one day this method could be used to change the course of an Earth-threatening asteroid. Dimorphos is thought to have formed from material thrown out by Didymos during a collision or when its rotation was faster. If so, the smaller asteroid could be a looser pile of rubble quite different from the rest of the space rocks. Therefore, as the researchers point out, first, it is necessary to determine what and how a given object is made of in order to effectively avoid danger. In a few years, the European Space Agency's HERA project plans to send a probe and conduct detailed close-up studies of both Dimorphos and Didymos, with particular emphasis on the crater left by the DART collision. The results and description of the observations were published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Footprints from nearly 3.7 million years ago may have been left by an unknown human ancestor. Found in 1976, footprints imprinted in a layer of volcanic ash in what is now Tanzania, which are nearly 3.7 million years old, were initially thought to be bare footprints. However, re-examination of ancient tracks suggests that they may have belonged to an unknown species of harmonin. The oldest unequivocal evidence of upright walking of harmonins are footprints discovered by paleontologist Mary Leakey and her team in Latoli, Tanzania in 1978. These footprints of bipedal beings imprinted in the volcanic ash date back 3.66 million years. Two years earlier, Near the site where Leakey's research group had found record old bipedal harmonin tracks, other tracks had been discovered, but they were assumed to be bare prints. A total of 18,400 prints were found in Latioli, most of which belonged to animals, hyenas, giraffes and ostriches. Recent research and comparative analysis of alleged bear tracks using the latest techniques indicated that they were left by a bipedal harmonin, but not of the same species as the one that made the more famous set of tracks nearby. The results of the new research have been published in the journal Nature. Given the growing body of evidence for locomotor and species diversity in harmonin fossils over the past 30 years, these remarkable footprints deserve new research, says lead author Ellison McNutt of Ohio University's Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine, who until recently worked at Dartmouth College. Her research interests focus on the biomechanics of walking in early humans. The researcher decided to take another look at the mysterious tracks at the Latolia site, which were attributed to bears.
She used comparative anatomy, including that of bears, to better understand how the heel bone contacts the ground. Leakey's footprints at the Latoli G and S sites were assigned to the species Australopithecus afarensis, which also included the famous Lucy. Her 3.2 million year old remains were found in Ethiopia. But because the footprints at Latoli A site were so different, some researchers thought they were made by a young bear walking upright on its hind legs. Bear tracks are sometimes confused with human tracks. In addition, bears sometimes walk on their hind legs. To determine whose footprints were found at the Latoli A site, in June 2019 an international research team, led by the co-author of the current publication, Charles Musaber, a professor of anthropology at the University of Colorado in Denver, traveled to Latoli, where they found and re-excavated the mysterious clues. Over the years, these traces have been covered by sediment washed away with rain from the surrounding hills. Musabi's team carefully measured the prints, photographed them, and scanned them for a 3D virtual reconstruction. The researchers compared the Latoli A tracks with those of black bears, Ursus americanus, chimpanzees, pan troglodytes, and humans, Homo sapiens. They started cooperation with the Killam Bear Center, a black bear rescue and rehabilitation center in Lyme, New Hampshire, USA. Four young, semi-wild black bears staying there turned out to be valuable material for research. Attracted by maple or apple syrup, they would stand on their hind legs in mud-filled terrain, all to get their traces. The researchers also collected more than 50 hours of video footage of wild black bears. Tracks from the Latoli A site are nearly 10 centimeters wide and about 16 centimeters long. The paws of the young bears at the Killam Bear Center turned out to be similar in size. When bears walk, they take very wide strides, swaying back and forth, says Jeremy De Silva, a professor of anthropology at Dartmouth College and co-author of the paper. They are unable to move in a manner similar to that imprinted at the Latoli A site because their hip muscles and the shape of their knees do not allow for this type of movement, he adds. According to scientists, the bear's heels are tapered and their toes and paws resemble a fan, while the feet of humans are more angular and have a prominent big toe. Recordings of wild bears show that the animals moved on their hind legs less than 1%. Total observation time, which makes it unlikely that the bear left footprints at Latoli. Especially considering that no footprints of this four-legged individual have been found. Moreover, the marks at the Latoli A site look as if their author placed his feet crossing one leg over the other while moving, similar to the way models on a catwalk move. People don't usually move like that. This movement can occur when we try to keep our balance to prevent a fall. The tracks from the Latoli A site may have been the result of a harmonin walking through an area that was an uneven surface, says McNutt. The prints left by the bears are so different from those found in Tanzania that even considering the fact that it may have been an ancient bear of an unknown species. The authors of the paper are sure that they do not belong to a bear. 
based on the tracks left by semi-wild chimpanzees at the Namba Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary in Uganda and by two captive juveniles at a facility run by Stony Brook University. The team concluded that chimpanzees have relatively narrow heels, a trait shared with bears, and the tracks from Latoli, including those from the Latoli A sites, have wide heels relative to their forefoot. The traces from the Latoli A site also contained impressions of a big toe and a long toe, the big toe and the smaller second toe. The difference in size between the two toes was similar to humans and chimpanzees, but not black bears. These details further suggest that the mysterious footprints were likely made by a bipedal harmonin. However, considering the foot proportions, morphology and likely gait, and comparing the footprints of Site A with those of Site G and S, it appears that the footprints at Site Latoli differ from those assigned to Australopithecus afarensis. Thanks to this research, we now have conclusive evidence that different species of harmonins walk this terrain on two legs, but in different ways. They also had different feet, says De Silva. We've known this evidence since the 1970s. But it wasn't until the re-examination of these wonderful traces and a more detailed analysis that we discovered it. Researchers determined that the prints previously thought to be bear tracks were made by a bipedal harmonin that measured about 100 centimeters. It may have been a juvenile, but researchers are not sure. They also indicate that this individual's big toe may have been prehensile, like that of great apes. Different hominid species roamed this East African landscape at about the same time, each moving in different ways, says paleoanthropologist Ellison McNutt.